Hi guys, welcome back to yet another truckload of DIY fun here aboard good old Athena. After having gutted most of the interior of Athena this summer to reinforce some structural members underneath the cabin sole, the rebuild is in full swing and the interior is slowly starting to actually resemble a sailboat again. Last week I completed this little section here of the galley. This is what the head looks like right now. As you can see, I've got a little bit of framing in place, but hopefully by the end of this week, the area behind the head itself and this little vanity here will be all roughed out. What I'm the most excited about from a DIY perspective in here in the head is the organic or slightly round shape that's gonna allow room for the sink here. But uh, we'll get back to that a little bit later. Step number the first is gonna be to get everything dry fitted in here. I swung by the local IKEA and wouldn't you know it, they just so happen to have a Build-A-Head kit in stock. I'm just kidding, this is 12mm Ukume plywood, it is not toilet paper reinforced sawdust. This should give you guys a little bit of a better idea of what the head is going to look like. Of course, there's going to be some cabinet doors down there. There's going to be that cutout for the sink I mentioned. And that is going to be more storage with yet more cabinet doors. Speaking of the cabinet doors and drawer fronts, thank you so much for all of the helpful comments on last week's video. I am going to stick with this style here, which apparently is called a shaker style. It's a new word I learned last week. Very cool. I've ordered a rail and style router bit set, which should be the spiffiest way of manufacturing door fronts and cabinet doors. It's supposed to get here on Friday. That's a little close for comfort, but if it gets here, then we'll take another stab at one of these door fronts. My primary goal for today and the reason for this dry fit is to figure out where I'm gonna drill some holes in the cabin sole to run conduit for the nav station and hot and cold water for the galley. But while I've got everything assembled, let's go ahead and cut out some of this material here to make room for the sink. If I've learned anything from kindergarten, it's the fact that a round hole and a square peg is no good. This is just to give me a rough idea of how much material to remove. It does not need to be a tight fit. After a little bit of fiddling about, I have gotten a reasonably good fit here. As you can see, the sink is not lined up perfect right now, but that is okay for now. When I say not perfectly lined up, I'm talking about height-wise. As you can see, it's sitting a little bit below what's going to be the countertop here, but that is on purpose. Unlike a regular bathroom, this bathroom is going to be pounding into waves. So I want to make sure this is really well supported. And the best way I could think of doing that is by coating this in multiple coats of PVA and then use it in place to cast sort of an epoxy foam cushion that it's going to sit in. The PVA should make sure that I can remove the sink again and the epoxy foam doesn't exert a lot of force when it's expanding, at least if my experience from building the new rudder is any kind of indication. So I think it's kind of perfect for making that little cushion for the sink. Now let's get to some hole drilling. I've got this 50 millimeter or two inch conduit here and I need three of these between the head and the nav station. The further out towards the hull I can place those holes, the better it's going to be because this space here is going to be very cramped. There's going to be a heater here, I need a hole to drain the sink into the shower sump, and I also need the water, the hot and cold water to come from here, go underneath the cabin sole and over to the galley. The challenge is that the hull is pretty much flat here, so if I drill a hole way out here, there's not going to be enough room between the cabin sole and the hull for the conduit, so I have to come in a little bit. But how far is enough? A couple of smaller exploratory holes should help me answer that question. Okay, so we've got plenty of room there. Drilling thusly completed to full satisfaction, I've got three holes. There's a big one right here for the conduit for the nav station, a smaller one for the hot and cold water for the galley, and this one for the sink for the drain. And the heater fits right here. 
The very last thing I want to do tonight is to just get that bottom piece of the vanity glued and screwed in place. Because if I do that, that means I can start priming tomorrow morning. Oh, let's just check that this is reasonably level. That looks about right. I've mixed up some epoxy and thickened it with 406. So now we can go ahead and glue this in place. Actually, it would be really cool if I could put up these supports for all of these shelves in there and cut the big holes for all the conduit, the heating and the water before I paint because that way I'm going to seal everything up in one fell swoop. I'll need to cut a pretty sizable hole to run all of this stuff. Here's the conduit, this is hot and cold water and this is for heating. I've made a little cardboard template here to use as a little guide. I need to make absolutely sure the top of my hole doesn't interfere with the support for the holding tank. And that should be all the holes I need. As you can see, it's pretty much a straight shot into the main saloon. Of course, I'll have to seal up the foam to make sure water doesn't get in there, but uh, let's save that for a little bit later. Let's put up the supports for the shelves first. But wait, wait a minute, what's that? My YouTube sensor is tingling. It's telling me that right now somebody's leaving a comment saying you should have cut the holes bigger to have room for future expansions. But this is plenty big. See, there's this big gap here in the middle and down here. And also the insulation for the hot and cold water is not going to be as thick as this. So yeah, the size of the hole should be fine. Let's uh, get back to the supports for the shelves in here. I've already put in place the support for this side over here. So now I can use my handy dandy foam template here to figure out the position for the other side. Somewhere right around here should be perfect. And let's just double check that with my handy dandy digital level. Right there. This is of course not glued in place yet. This is just a little bit of a sanity check to make sure everything looks right before I do something that's very hard to reverse. I want to be able to open these two cabinet doors even with the seat for the head raised. So I need to take that into consideration when I put the supports for the shelves in place. I'm okay having the bottom shelf be a little bit below the opening into the locker. So let's just put it a few centimeters above this. That is both supports for the shelves in place. I was gonna do the area underneath the sink next, but I've just noticed that there was a through hole there that I needed to remove and that I forgot to glass this section up here to the hull. So I wanna do that, get all of this glued, and also seal up the hole down here. That is gonna take a little bit of time, and that is a commodity I am fast running out of today. So uh, let's go ahead and engage turbo mode. Over the last couple of days, I have finished painting and assembling the little vanity area here and also the area behind the head is all painted and ready for insulation. I've got four coats of epoxy primer applied to the plywood to help seal it up and protect it from moisture. And then on top of that, I've got two coats of a polyurethane paint called Sigma Duo 520 to give me a hard wearing and very durable surface. As you can see, I haven't painted the front of the vanity here yet, and the same is true over in the galley. And that's basically because I haven't decided what paint I want to use, nor what color I want to use. But with the plywood in here all protected, I can now move on to what I've really been looking forward to, and that is to make the rounded shape that's going to cover up the front of the sink. The method I want to use is something I first saw used about 10 years ago, and ever since then I've really wanted to play around with it. I've just never had a project where it would come in useful. So uh, yeah, let's uh, get started. 
The first step is going to be to build some kind of support or a skeleton almost. I've never done this before, so this is a little bit of a learning experience for me, but that's okay. Those projects are often the most rewarding ones. This should give me a rib that's almost a perfect match for the curvature of the sink. I don't know if the thin pencil lines are going to show up on camera, but uh, let's take this to the bandsaw. This should give you an idea of what I want to do, but of course these are all the same shape. So I'm going to modify the bottom ones a little bit just to give it more of an interesting shape. Let's number these so I don't get them mixed up. So the first one is number one, the next one is number two, and so on. I don't know if this will work, but I want to see what happens if I shorten number two by one centimeter, number three by two centimeters, and number four by three centimeters. That should give me a little bit more of an sort of interesting shape. Well, I don't know how this looks to you guys, but to me, this looks very promising. Like I mentioned, I am in uncharted territory here. I'm hoping a few dabs of hot glue will help secure the skeleton. In the name of spiffiness, I have sacrificed this tattered looking old Columbia shirt to the gods, and in return, they have blessed me with a piece of fleece. As you can see, the skeleton here is stiffened up quite nicely, helped by these stir sticks here, and everything is wrapped in green tape. That's so I can hopefully extract the skeleton in the not too distant future. But what I want to do here is just to drape this fleece over it and just get that stapled to the vanity. I am under no illusion. This is most definitely going to require a fair bit of fairing to end up being super spiffy, but this should give me the shape I want. This is more or less the shape I was going for. As you can see, I wasn't able to get the felt all stretched out. There's some wrinkles down here, but like I said, this is going to require additional fairing. So yeah, that's fine. Here's a quick peek of the inside. I've preheated my epoxy in the little heating box here. It's just a wooden box with a silicon heating mat inside of it. I've done that in the hopes of lowering the viscosity of the epoxy to make it easier to soak it into the fleece. Yep, this is basically the viscosity of water. This is definitely going to take a little bit of time, but hopefully tomorrow when I come back, this should have stiffened up so they can use this to lay up a little bit of additional glass to reinforce it and maybe put a bit of foam on the inside, but we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. Good morning, guys. It is the next day. Let's see if we've turned this flobby fleece into structural fleece. Yep, structural fleece 2000, the lesser known hull material. I think the first thing I want to do today is to do a little bit of glorious fleece sanding just to get rid of all of this excess. And just like that, the sink cover is all prepped for a layer of fiberglass. Even though I've got structural felt on here, patent pending, I'm gonna hold off a little bit on removing the skeleton here because this entire thing is still a little bit flimsy. If I bring you guys in a little bit closer, hopefully you can see that there's not a lot of rigidity here. I want to apply a couple of layers of fiberglass on the outside 
of the sink cover. That's not going to add that much rigidity. Some strips of foam on the inside will do a much better job of that. But uh, let's just start with the glass. You can see where the skeleton kind of stretched out the fabric a little bit here. I'm going to get rid of the bulk of that by applying a little bit of thickened epoxy before laying up glass. I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment. I could just use a bunch of 406, but I've got some of these cotton flux lying around from when I made the mold for the new rudder. And I think maybe mixing a little bit of this into the 406 could be good. Before I start mixing up epoxy, I want to cut the glass I'm going to be using. Now I'll have plenty of working time, but it's just nice to have it done beforehand. Three layers of 600 gram BX is all I am going to lay up. This will still be kind of flimsy, but like I said, the rigidity is going to come from foam strips on the inside of the sink cover. If I'm not mistaken, and I might very well be mistaken, but I think one of the features of the cotton flock is just that it'll hold a little bit of resin to make sure that you don't get a dry layup. So let's give it a go. Also, one of the reasons I'm adding just a little bit of that cotton flock is because I'm kind of running low on 406. As always, when mixing thickened epoxy, I am going by feel. I want to add as little filler as I can to get a no sag consistency. And this seems perfect. What I want to do is just to fill up these little low spots here. That is going to mean a little bit less fairing down the road. And it's also going to make it a little bit easier to lay up fiberglass. Yep, this does look a little bit messy, but uh, let's wet out some glass and get that on here. That should help a lot. Because it is a curved surface, I'm going to lay the glass up one layer at a time. If I lay up the three layers at the same time, it's going to be more difficult to get that to conform to the shape of the sink cover. Pretty much the first layer applied. Now, from a safety standpoint, what I'm doing here is not great. Touching epoxy with these thin gloves is, uh, well, it's not ideal. And we're ready for the second layer. Whenever I get epoxy on my gloves, I change them out as quick as I can. It's still not ideal, but it's better than nothing. And here we've got the third and final layer. That is three layers of glass and one layer of peel ply done. About a day's worth of fairing and this should look like something off of a race car. The reason I want to remove the plywood skeleton inside of the sink cover is that if I have something in there that's going to provide rigidity, I want it to be something that's not going to rot and leave you with a flobby sink cover because who wants that? Unfortunately, I'm going to have to wait until tomorrow to see how strong the sink cover is going to be with that fiberglass on there. And you guys are even worse off because you guys are going to have to wait until next week. I think I made some decent progress here in the head this week. The vanity is fully assembled. Everything is sealed up. The sink cover is looking very promising. The area behind the sink is all figured out. I've got the shelves up there. So all that needs is a front and a bit of glasswork to secure the shelves and a bit of insulation. And of course, then I also need to figure out what to do about the bulkhead up here. A few weeks back, I floated the idea of a bent mirror up here. There were some people in the comments pointing out that that might not give the best, most flattering reflection. So yeah, in the end, I might just end up fairing all of this and putting up a much smaller, completely flat mirror. But yeah, I will need to figure out what to do about this. In next week's video, we'll take a look at the rail and style router bit set I mentioned for the shaker style drawer fronts and cabinet doors. And also I'll put together this little bunch of parts over here, which is going to turn into a DIY fuel polisher. And of course, we're also going to get the first lick of fairing compound on the sink cover and see how strong it is with that bit of fiberglass on there. And that is going to be the end of this video. I hope to see all of you back here at Athena next Sunday at 8 p.m. as usual. And uh, yeah, as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.